Hello, everyone, and welcome to the International Fab Talks. It's a beautiful day today, and let's celebrate it in a beautiful way by connecting and bonding with great celebrities across the world. All those unsung heroes who have given their very best to all the people they know in their lives and to unknown people too. Today, we are being joined by a special celebrity and guest all the way from Hyderabad, Telangana. She's here to share her journey with us and inspire us and empower people across the globe. She is none other than Miss M. Mukundamala. Let's welcome our celebrity. Join us, friends. Hello, ma'am, and welcome to the session. It's nice to be here and share my feelings, experiences with you all. Thank you, ma'am. My dear friends, do you know who is ma'am? Our celebrity today, Mukundamala, ma'am. She is somebody who is really extra special. That mother who is not only a mother to her own child, she is a mother to many out there. Let me just share her profile in a very official way. She is the founder of Queer Bandhu Parents Association. And that makes her extra special. Being the founder of such a beautiful organization and helping other parents, helping other children really makes her an angel on earth. Ma'am, thank you so much for accepting the invitation to the International Fab Talks. Yes, yeah, my pleasure. Friends, I'd like to go ahead and share the profile of our celebrity and guest today. You will get to know more about her and you could really benefit from this beautiful session and enrich in the lives of the people who you come across in such situations. She is M. Mukundamala and she has been in the social service for over two decades, helping various sections of the society. She retired from Coromandel International Limited as the deputy manager in 2016. She is currently involved in upliftment of the LGBTQ community for over a decade. She has been instrumental in bridging the gap between the administration and transgender community and helped in creating a platform where the issues are discussed for a resolution. Friends, she did a lot of counseling to all the children when they were in a different phase of their life, when they had suicidal tendencies and parents did not accept such children. So she stood up for such children and understood the pain and agony of those little children who underwent the transformational process in their lives, who understood themselves in a different perspective. She began to respect them as they are. And she brought awareness at the collectorates in getting ID cards for transgenders and helping communities to uh, for in applying for ID cards to district magistrate offices. Such a great work. Many of us just don't care about anybody. We are happy with who we are. We got us, our ID cards, we are fine. But we have people selflessly working. And that is why they say, you know, God could not be present everywhere and hence he created mothers and great people like our celebrity and guest. She is Miss M. Mukundamala, ma'am. She also arranged to include transgenders in the services of Ranga Reddy and Hyderabad District Legal Services Authority, DLSA. She started few livelihood projects with the help of MSI for community people, man, like, um, you know, community people like pickle business, paper plate manufacturing, tiffin centers, etc. She collected around about uh, rupees uh, 10 to 20 lakhs and through crowdfunding raised by women and transgenders, JAC, and deposited rupees 3,000 per head to more than 340 transgenders' personal accounts during the pandemic. The pandemic, you all know that was COVID, and the transgender community was neglected. All were worried about their own lives. We forgot about this uh, you know, se section of people who belong to the transgender group, and we really neglected them. But there are people like... Mala Ma'am, who has stood by them and has really focused in bringing a balance in their lives. Now, jute bag manufacturing training program arranged by Telangana State Women Development and Child Welfare Department and Telangana Women Corporation for 26 trans women in two batches. They started manufacturing and selling jute bags. And who was behind all of this? Our guest, our celebrity. She was behind this. Along with her team, she focused to build a beautiful world for all those people. She organized COVID vaccination for transgender community without Aadhaar card with the help of the center, central, M-O-S-A-J, if you could get that right, and state governments. During the pandemic, she also arranged groceries for the trans community 
through St. Francis High School, Monfort School Institute and other NGOs, recruiting skilled trans persons in MNCs. That's great. Active membership in channels which help the trans community. Member in library of diversity. Previously, it was human library with a book titled Mothering LGBTQI Child. So this great awareness was brought in, in reputed MNCs and educational institutions. She is the wonderful founder of Queer Bandhu Parents Association, as I mentioned in the early, earlier stages uh, or the start of the interview. She also is connected to the Telangana State Transgender Welfare Board mem membership. She's into that too. Clinical Advisory Board member of MITR Clinic, exclusive first transgender clinic in India. Advisor in Trans Equality Society, affiliated with Rainbow Department in Montfort Social Institute, Hyderabad. Member of Swikar Rainbow Parents Group, organized the first hysterectomy surgery for trans man in Usmania General Hospital, Hyderabad, Telangana, India. Arranged jute bags manufacturing training for trans women by Hyderabad Art Diocese Social Service Services Society, H-A-S-S-S. And distributed jute bag stitching machines as well. Arranged first stalls for trans community in all India industrial exhibition Nampali, which is very famous. I'm sure it is going on till now. Uh, yes. And because in Jan, it starts in Jan and ends, uh, I think, in the second week of Feb. Hyderabad through SIDBI, that is SIDB. And she has received several awards. Uh, Vocational Excellence Award 2021-22 for service to the LGBTQI community by Rotary Club of Contonment. Inspiring Women's Award 2021 for We for Women. Pride of Telangana Award under, stay, under Star Women category by Round Tabke India. Advisory Board Member of Queer and Trans Wellness Center. And as well, she's associated with various social groups for society betterment. She was the past chairman of the Indian Association of Secretaries and admin professionals, Hyderabad chapter, Yagna for orphan children. She's also connected with Freedom Foundation for HIV children, Rainbow Homes for orphan and semi-orphan children, My Home, that is home for senior citizens as well, Lahiri Old Age Home, MV Foundation, Bridge School, and much more. I would just like to put a stop over here because there's so much to share and it is really so inspiring to have people share the space with us like this today. Let's get to know more about her work and what inspired her into this beautiful journey of being an angel and a mother to several people across the globe. Hello, ma'am, and welcome to the session. Thank you. Yes, dear. As we start this Fab Talk session, getting to know how our celebrities could inspire you, could influence your lives, could help you to come out of the shell and spread your wings and live a complete life. Dear ma'am, the first question that I'd like to pose to you, who is the real M. Mukundamala? I've explained it and shared it in an official way, but I'd like to share, uh, we'd like to hear it from you. I would like you to share it from your side too. Yes, I am my motherhood. So motherhood is a great gift of nature, like, right? So every mother is having that motherhood. Mine is unique. Unique means how? I had a motherhood of one normal child, one gay and trans child. Everything is in one child because initially my child born as a boy, identified as a gay, but down the years, again, identified as a trans woman. So in this process, I enjoyed these three motherhoods that I am so lucky to have that, you know, unique motherhood. So you can say my mother, people will say mother's love is universal love. Everyone will believe that, but I stopped believing after I started working with the children. Why? As far as that the child is normal child, if they come and ask anything, 
they'll give everything. But the moment the child come and say, I am from this community, are they standing with them? No. Hardly we can count on fingers how many parents are standing with them. How can I believe that mother's love is universal love? Mine is unconditional love. When my child came out, I was unaware of this. I don't know anything about LGBTQI. But when he mentioned, Mama, I am a gay. Then I said, what is gay? He said, Mama, I'm not getting attracted to opposite sex. I'm getting attracted to the same sex. What are you joking? Are you joking? How is it possible? Then his Mama, don't go panic. I will explain to you. When the child was explaining the whole spectrum, my worry is, it's not like, you know, I don't have daughter-in-law. I don't have grandchildren. No. My worry is, how, how the child will live after my life. Because no one will stand with them. No relative, no sibling, no society. How do they live? People will think, you know, marriage is only for sex purpose. No. Beyond that, there are many spectrums, you know. Like, see, recently that in Supreme Court, that, that judgment was going on. People were talking in different ways. I said, through Peer Bandhu Parents Association, we have, we have also given one open letter to CJI. So why? We want, we are expecting our children to live at par with other heterosexual children. Because keeping this is, sex is, all, is important. It's not also, it is important in everybody's life. Keep that aside. Apart from that, there are many priorities. See, when the child is earning, they'll have this, so many desires. I want to buy a house, I want to buy this, that, everything. Of whom do they give? After their time, for whom, for whose sake is the sake they'll have to earn money. So for that, somebody should be there. If they fall sick, when they get admitted in a hospital, somebody will have to give their consent, right? Who will give? For all these things, you know, somebody should be there. That's how we are going on working for this community. People are thinking it is chosen by them. Sorry, it is not chosen by them. We are the people who gave them birth. Then whose responsibility is this? It is our responsibility. If then you talk about society and the government. When you, after giving birth, if you don't take care of your child, who else will come and take care of the child, children? So it's from my side, it's my opinion, 100% it is the responsibility of parents, especially mother. That's how I stood with my child. I said, whatever you are, end of the day, you are my child. I am going to be with you. I said, this is not the country for you. In the year 2005, she was in you know, very conservative college, Usmania Medical College. I told her, please don't come out now. If you come out, there are chances to hold these certificates also. Wait till you complete your MBS. Then I said, after that, you cannot live here. You'll have to leave our country and go. What she said, Mama, you want me to be a covered person? No. I born on this earth here in this state. I want to live here. I want to fight for my rights. That's all. After she completed her MBBS, when she came out of the college in the year 2011, from 2012, we started coming out and talking to people and we participated in all pride marches took place in Hyderabad. But what happened? In this course, she had a lot of problems. While doing her MBBS, she had a lot of problems. She never told me because I don't I don't spare anybody if someone will come and do something for my child. Right? So recently when she came to India, then she said, MBBS document is black document and those days are black days. 
these two words enough for me. I know to take her back to those days and ask what happened, right? Then after MBBS, she left our country and she went to Europe. There she did her master's in gerontology. When she came here recently, while we are talking, she said, had I been normal child, I would have become specialist in AIMS. Who lost one good doctor? Our society lost, right? That's how she left our country. She went to Europe, master's in gerontology. Again, came back here. She did geriatric medicine, PG diploma. And then she left it to years. And she she's doing PhD in gerontology. Gerontology is science of aging. She's working on LGBT aging. Again here, LGBT aging doing is very tough. Even after her PhD, getting jobs is also very tough because this community ka support will be very less. Even universities also, all universities will not have that subject. That's how I was standing with her and I brought her up to this level. Then I thought many children, especially from this trans, even LGB, both spectrum, but children are struggling, struggling, struggling. What they're expecting? They're not expecting anything from their parents. They're expecting only life, love and affection. Even that they're not giving. Many of the parents, I'm not talking about everybody. Then I thought, what am I doing? I accepted my child. So let me work. Anyway, I, I was working for other communities. Then I started from 2012. But I couldn't do much because that time act was not there. So 2018, this 377 section has, has come, decriminalization. At, till that time, these children were treated like you know criminals. They used to get scared even to walk on roads. I myself used to get scared till my child come home. Because some people, they even police, it happened once. I said, you should have called me. Whenever, wherever you are, you should have called me. I should have come and ask that policy itself. This is my business, whether my child is gay, lesbian, trans, with whom he is going to have a sex. It is my private. It's my concern and my husband's concern. It's not business of government or police. If they are doing anything publicly, yes, that is your responsibility to punish that child. Right? Looking at that body, you can't come to one confirmation, yes, they are so and so. You can't punish them, right? That was the case before. Then I started working with children. After working, started working with the children, I heard many pathetic stories. Pathetic. So parents themselves, they're putting them in rooms. They're not giving them food. They're beating them. So then I let to spend. Then I started to slow down my services towards normal community and fully involved in this. After 2018, we started, I started concentrating majority of my time in this. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing that. Thank you very much. I mean, your love is unconditional and we would want all the parents out to have this unconditional love because we are the ones who have given birth to our children. It's not the fault of the child, right? Yes. It is we. It is, we as parents should stand up and as you mentioned at the start, your mother's love is universal and you disagree on that because there are certain parents and there are certain mothers who don't support the child. If not the mothers, then who then? Right? Yeah. So you put that very well. So love should be unconditional and you should respect the truth. There is some truth there. There's nothing false. There's a real truth there and there are scientific reasons too for it and it has to be accepted. Ma'am, can you think I'll share here? Yes, please. See, most of us, we are living for the society's sake. Right? Why? If society is not there, I can survive. But if I am not there, child life will be miserable. See, I am not telling all parents, I, I don't disagree fully. There are children, parents, this is my personal opinion, because somebody may think, you know, they are there, unconsciously we are lo loving. 
So I'm not talking about all, all mothers. This is my personal opinion. Yeah. Yes, dear. I agree with you, ma'am. I agree with you. And I must say your daughter is blessed uh, to have you as a mother. And the other children who have come out in the open and have accepted themselves, they have not been accepted in their house, but you've accepted them. They call you as mother. So that's really great. You know, Thank you. they have found, you know, solace in you because you've understood the real thing that they're going through the process, difficult process. Uh, you know, they're excluded from the society. So we have to have them included and treated equally. Ma'am, I just want to ask you a question. When your daughter came out, when your child when your child came out into the open and told you for the very first time that this is me, this is who I am, how long did it take for you to accept the truth? Did you accept it on the spot or you took some time to, you know, understand it and then re respond instead of reacting? Did you react or respond first? How, I mean, if I put it in that way. Because of, again here, because of my unconditional love on the spot, not even one second, on the spot I said, Whatever you are, end of the day, you are my child. I am going to be with you. That's it. No second thought. No scare. I never scared about the society. I know my about my child. Let me read about that. Though I don't know, I accepted. Then I started studying on Google. Then I made my mind strong. I met a psychologist. She made it very clearly. Before that, I thought, you know, I can do something. You know, science is advancing. Medication is advancing. My child, you know, very um, intellectually, I told her, you know, wherever you want. She said, Mama, wherever you want me to come, I'll come. Please take me. I said, why don't you decide? Intellectually, he did, she didn't take me to doctor. She took me to psychologist. Doctors were not supportive at all. Even today, I can say that. Even today, many children are coming out and saying, Mommy, this doctors are telling you know parents like this they're not believing us so that is very pathetic why why are they behaving like this like how long we keep fighting so we don't have that much time also even that they can do now we have you know um, indian psychiatric society is there we can give complaints and all how long our so resources are very less so that's how my child took me to psychologist she made it very clear yes he had to live with this so that from that night, I started reading on Google. I made my mind strong. Yes, I let you read this. That's it. I never thought about second thought, what my relatives will think, friends will think, neighbors will know. My child is priority for me. Excellent. My child is my priority. Yes. Yes. Dear ma'am, I have a nice question for you now. What were some of the stigmas you faced or you might have faced as a parent when you went out with your child and you you opened up to the world and you know you spoke out the truth that this is what my child is we are coming out in the open and how did people react to you how did they respond to you were they welcoming or did you face any uh, you know harsh treatment from the society and the known people of course the known ones more than the yeah, unknown ones. actually a lot of stigma will be there because i am very bold lady people knows this lady will not take anything. There's no point of, you know, giving her back like that. But within my family, my sisters, everybody, they accept it. Then they shouted, why did you keep all these years secrets? We are your family members. Why did you do, why did you do this mistake? Your child is our child. That's how immediately they took her when she came back from years. They invited her to resort, they celebrate it. But other side, no, till now they're not accepting. Accepting means I'll go because I'm not blaming them. That family is also a very loving family because they don't know anything about this. That is only the thing. They are good people. So whose responsibility to teach them, educate people? This is my responsibility. Because they are behaving like this, I should not keep away them. I should move with them while moving. I'll have to educate them, right? That's so. one of my family members, he said, you're spoiling our surname. I said, please take back your surname. Your brother is with me. Another family member said, you and brother can come, but not your child. 
get lost. When there is no place for my child, I'll not be there. Five years passed. I'm visiting Bangalore. I'm not entering into this house. But at the same time, I'm not blaming them. Recently, they asked, you are coming here, but you are not coming to a house. I said very politely, I don't have anything bad, negative opinion on you. You hurt me. That wound is there in my heart. That is not healing still. Let it heal fully. Definitely, I'll come to your house. But I don't have any negative thought on you. That's why I'm talking to you all. I'm moving with you all. Please don't misunderstand me. So it is my responsibility to understand them, teach them. Till now, no one will talk about that. Till now, no one will inquire about my child. Maybe recently one or two people started. Because I'm going, moving, I'm doing all these activities. Maybe they must they come to know. That's it. These are the stigmas are going on. Coming to my friends, 99% they stop talking to me. 99% they stopped inviting me for their marriage, children, marriages, birthdays. But I'm so happy for that because I can save my time. I can save my energy. I can save my money. Same thing I'm diverting to this community child, children. So I never feel sad about that. I feel very happy about that. Excellent, ma'am. Excellent. Perfect. And you've given a nice reply towards the end. It saves my time. It saves energy. And it saves my money. And I'm diverting this money to the ch children who really require it. That's really nice. Yeah, if I'm not there, there my resistance will not be stopped. No one will wait for me. But here, mother... I am one mother, to my knowledge, in both the cities, to my knowledge. I am only mother coming and talking everywhere. So children are get, getting benefited at ground level people. That is priority for me. Yes, dear. That's really nice. You are a very nice mother. I wish many people out there have a mother like this to understand you. No matter what you do, you are able to stand with you. And they are able to, you know, bring out the best in you and, and lead you to the right path. So you're one beautiful mother because I've heard many cases earlier too that the uh, parents are very cruel and especially they, they just ask the child to leave the home and go. They, you know, let the child become an orphan. When the parents are still alive, they just chase away the children. So you're a great mother, really hats off to you uh, and uh, to your husband as well because both of you have stood together with your child. Dear ma'am, there's another beautiful question which I'd like to ask you now, which is a very important one, which will be focusing for the everyone, all the parents who are in this scenario, in this case. How do you think parents should contribute to their child's self-expression and gender identity when children come out to their parents? Now, you've given your side of the story, how you came, overcame it and how you accepted your child with love, unconditional love. Now, what type of a suggestion you'd like to give to the other parents? whose children might start coming out slowly in the open and sharing it with them. Even if children don't come out in the open, suddenly parents get to know about it. Either not directly from the children, but they get to know about it. So what suggestion you have for such parents? For both the parents, let both the parents take the responsibility because both are responsible for the child's birth. Thanks. But yes. yeah. So true, this is a very good question, uh, Krishela. See, when the child comes, always when they come to know, it is not easy task for any parent to accept, to digest also. So I don't blame parents. They'll have to take time. But at the same time, it is their responsibility also to protect that child. So how to balance that? One side, you'll have to digest. You'll have to try to digest that. Then you'll have to try to protect that child's career also. Right? So what they'll have to do? When you come to know, when you have any doubt, just watch them. Don't shout at them. Some people will they say, no, immediately, you are behaving like boy. You are behaving like, like girl. Please don't use those words. They're not behaving purposely. They're born like that. Maybe they're XY, because of their XY chromosomes or hormones, whatever it is. Just watch them. Talk to them. Understand them. 
if you can't if you have any doubts no when my child came not a single soul was there to go and talk but now vast huge places are there ngos are coming out people are people like us are there then psychologists many people are there so why don't you go and talk to them understand them read about them then you come to one conclusion till them be patient it is very challenging job i don't say it is very you know cat work it is challenging but it is your responsibility you should be patient don't jump on anything if anyone will come and say your child is going here and there he is behaving like this listen to them then watch on that child and give them give him that liberty to come and share with you for example i brought up my child today if i if i have any, he is having that fear the same in love and affection that freedom to come and say anything that freedom all parents should give them that freedom to express if they don't they have that freedom whom do go they go and express these feelings see it should start at home not others if you give that room at home child will not go anywhere child will come and share with you you can do justice what you can do had i be behave like other parents today even my child should have gone somewhere else right why do you want to give that chance to that child who is the causer you are the causer to child behave like that to child leaving house and going out and doing other traditional professions other traditional professions you don't like it but the children parents that is okay for them right but they don't want to counsel them they want they don't want to keep them at their house why because of only social stigma see today i'm just waiting if anyone will come and fight with me i'm not getting that chance because i didn't give them chance because i know what i'm doing it i'm not doing anything wrong i did thorough study okay there are few people not educated for them we are all there we will educate them so, so just give them the chance to share their inner voices listen to their inner voices be patient if you be with them then you know they can settle in their careers see because i was with my child i can leave this world peacefully and go the child i settled her in proper way but after your life do you want your child to struggle with this society would you like that if you don't like that be with the child let anybody come and ask you he give them answer yes there is nothing wrong in that if you go back to our mythology we are doing pujas no we are worship worshiping them why don't you love your own child coming from that same community that is my my answer to parents please be with them and just ensure they'll settle in their lives for my child i did everything now the day has come i have to look for boy also it is my responsibility i can't leave her alone but if it don't happen it is very tough if it don't happen also i'm happy for that also i'm i'm keeping my child ready to accept that situation also for that also positive points we'll have to take right that's how we we'll have to make our child in safe place and mentally also we we'll have to prepare them mental health that is called mental health we not go to any doctor your mother is good doctor for your mental health right i'll keep talking like this please go to it yes dear yeah, yes you most welcome ma'am i really appreciate it ma'am and what i have tried to understand now is if the child comes out into the open and accepts his sexuality or her sexuality parents should accept them and should respect them and guide them into the right profession otherwise they will take the wrong step and they will go into the traditional professions and get trapped over there or maybe 
it's it's always good for parents to support their children and bring them to the right type of professions. Like in the case, you can make your child a doctor, a police inspector, or you can many beautiful professions are there apart from yes. the traditional one. Yes. So stand with your children, do not abandon them. And there is no other outlet for them to go. So then finally they will fall into the traditional profession and they will be over there. So it is our responsibility. That's the beautiful message. Am I right, ma'am? Yes. Yes. yes, yes, you are right. You are Educate right. them and show them the right, uh, you know, professional uh, path such that they can choose any one of them which is very best for them and live a beautiful life. Even when you are no longer on this earth, they will live with dignity. In the dignity, in safe place. In a safe place. Yes, dear. And, and I like this, ma'am, you said, like, you know, finding a life partner. If they are able to find a good life partner, well and good. And if no, prepare them mentally to live for themselves you know, and to live with dignity. It's yeah. not that if we have a life partner, we are always going to be happy. It's not like that. No. You have to be happy with yourself first. Yes. And happy, you could be happy alone too. And of course, with people around you. So you put that very well as a mother. You've given us a lot of clarity. I really like that. And what's the best thing all mothers and parents could learn from you is, ma'am, not to leave your children no matter what. Stand with them and show them the right track because you should be responsible because you people have given birth to them. Just give birth and just abandon them. That's not the right thing. Yeah. Right? Yes, dear. that's beautiful, ma'am. Ma'am, I just have another question, ma'am. At what age do children come out and identify themselves that, oh, this is me and I'm attracted to the same gender? Which age, or which is that crucial period in their life that they get to know that they're not attracted to the opposite gender? No, we can't say any specific age. For example, my child came to know she's not normal when she was very child, you know, like seven, eight years like that. I, I met few children also, six years, five years, then seven years, eight years, so they could find out they're not like other children. So what happened? Nowadays, they're able to find out. But those days, my child uh, days, I'm telling you, 2005, when she was in MBBS first year, means 17 years. That time, she came to me. But she realized she's not normal, something different. But they don't know where to come and say. Because how you and me know those days, we know only man, male and female. Even for them, only male and female. They don't know either about other this LGBT spectrum. But the thing happening for them is completely different. It is like this, uh, uh, Crystal, when the child is four years, up to four years, they will give bath for child. They'll come out. They'll give you, they'll, you'll put on clothes for them. But five, six years, they'll not come out. No, I'll not come. I'll not come out. You give me clothes here, I'll wear and come. That is one stage, right? After from uh, six to 12 years, they know I am a boy. I am a girl, right? After that, 12 years to 15, 16, 17 years, then they'll get attracted. All of us, it is nature. Everyone, see that boy is good, that he's nice, his eyes are good, like that. That will happen to everybody, to opposite sex. But for these children, that will not happen. So there, they will be in dilemma. What is happening? It is, is it happening only to me? Is it happening to others also? Is something wrong with me? They will be in dilemma. In our Indian society, we don't give liberty to our children to talk all other things. Like, you know, about sex, whatever it is. So they, they can't come out because they don't have that liberty. They themselves will keep thinking, thinking, thinking. They can't concentrate on the, the studies. All these things will happen. But a few children, my child, he must have realized something wrong with him. But when when this question, this my story is very big story, Crystal. I put him in baby care when she was six month old. That's one day I was telling her, see how you, dad, me struggle. I don't want you, your wife and your child to struggle. Select your own partner from your juniors. And as soon as your MBBS is completed, I'll perform your marriage. Give birth to one or two children. Leave them with me. Again, go ahead for your further studies. One Sunday, I was telling about that. Then he said, 
Mama, you are having high ambition. I said, no, anyone will have ambition. No, Mama, all these things will not happen. Just he walked out. Then he said, he started showing boys when she when he was driving for me to drop me in office. He used to show boys. Then I said, I waited for 10 days. That boy, eyes are good, forehead is good, handsome, everything. Then after 10 days, useless fellow, always you are showing only boys. Why don't you girls? I'll help you out. Then he thought, stupid lady, she doesn't know about this community. I'll have to teach her. Then he said, Mama, coming Saturday, we'll spend together. We didn't sit together for long. And that Sunday has come. We sat together. He was waiting to come out. Then he said, Mama, this story started. Mama, I like it. So he realized that. Maybe after some time, he realized that he's a gay. But that, 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 with that also, he was not happy. When he went to Europe, he said, Mama, why don't you look, look for, you know, uh, asexual? I'm not happy with my sexual orientation. We studied about that also. Because I'm close to her, she took that liberty. We both worked out on that. Then after she went to US, then she identified herself as a gay. Like this, I saw many children. One child, he was around, you know, 28 years, few years back. I don't want to name them. He is now a very famous child. I don't want to name him. Then I asked, what is your sexual orientation? Could you find out? No, auntie, I couldn't find out. Still, I'm in dilemma. Now he is pansexual. After 28 years, he realizes he is pansexual. So there's no specific age to identify the sexual orientation or gender identity also. My own family members asked, why she didn't tell us when she born? No, we can't say that. While they're growing, when puberty formation, like that, you know, few people will identify themselves. Mute, mute. Yes, dear. Sorry, ma'am, I muted myself. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing and opening up so well. You really are a great example for all other mothers and parents and fathers as well, not only in India, across the world. Stand up for your child, understand your child and protect your child as well from the bullying, from the stigma of the society because you're not educated on this given topic or on this given you know, sexuality of your child. Ma'am, as, as the founder of Queer Bandhu Parents Association, what type of challenges you faced? Was it a smooth walk into becoming a founder of this beautiful organization of enlightening parents, empowering parents of children uh, from the transgender community? Yes, it is easy now because we previously we never had. Here, I want to share about Suikar Rainbow Parents uh, more than, you know, uh, Queer Bandhu Parents Association. Queer Bandhu Parents Association is only one and a half years old. Okay. Yes. Uh, why I started this also, I'll tell you. Svika Rainbow Parents, they started in 2017, before 377 decriminalization in the year 2018. Just before that, they started with eight parents. Okay. Today, they are more than 500 parents. So, with this parents association, looking at one parent, other parent is coming and joining. So, what is happening here? That, you know, coming out, that easiness, comfortableness, everything is coming out. So looking at other parents, other parents are coming and joining. What will happen when parents are coming and learning about this, that will be easy for child to come out to these parents, right? They are learning so many things. I'm telling this Sveka Rainbow Parents group, such a loving group. Now 2017 means how many years passed? We never had any cross debates, cross discussions. We're all together debating, sharing our thoughts, helping each other. Such a beautiful rainbow, Svika Rainbow Parents group, WhatsApp group this is. So uh, that's how, no, in Svika Rainbow Parents is based at Mumbai. But North Indian peoples, many of them, they came and joined there. From South, hardly people are coming and joining. So what I thought, if I have separate in Telangana, in South, maybe few parents may come and join. That's how I started Southern Swekar Parents Group here. 
Now here we are around only 30 members, but they're not coming out and talking openly. I'm expecting that, you know, let us come out. Here in Bombay, there are so many events are happening, uh, Crystal. All parents are very active. They are conducting seminars. They are conducting it, conducting training programs. Uh, like you know, they have go. They'll have get-togethers. Everything they are enjoying themselves. Okay. The same day, even children also. They are supporting children also. That I'm expecting in South. In South, parents are not coming forward. I wish they will also come forward. We will. Um, conduct, you know, training programs of them, for them, seminars we can conduct, all these things. I'm trying my best but it will take time maybe for them. I'm giving them time also. I wish they'll come soon open and how Suvika Rainbow Parents Group they're having in Calcutta, they're having Rainbow Home in Calcutta, they're having West Bengal. In Pune also they started. All these places are going very well. In South, it is not happening. I wish Soon, our parents also will come forward, stand with children, and you know, educate themselves through these parents' groups. Yes, dear. Good things take time, ma'am, and you are on the right track. You are doing a great job, and a great uh, message to all the parents out there. If you find your child belongs to the transgender community, you've identified that yes, my child requires my help. Join up together. You can't fight the battle alone. You have to join and unite 